Welcome back. Uh, so we'll continue our overview of the Hadoop stack uh, and uh, take a look at uh, the base storage, which is the Hadoop distributed file system. Uh, and we'll look at the original design uh, concepts and goals. And then we're going to look at the HDFS architecture that uh, basically took uh, address these goals and see what enhancements came up in the next version of uh, HDFS, which is in Hadoop 2. So if you recall from our previous uh, modules and lessons, uh, HDFS, I mean Hadoop has transitioned from Hadoop 1 to 2 and this has come with a lot of enhancements both on HDFS side, going from HDFS to HDFS 2 and uh, other, uh, other things like the uh, resource management and execution engines. So for this video we're going to just focus on the HDFS aspect. So the basic design concept is essentially try to get a lot of data processing performance and uh, capacity by just using a lot of nodes. And essentially what we do is take the files and uh, store them on blocks in blocks that are spread out over a lot of nodes. And this could be hundreds or thousands of nodes. And this gives us uh, a lot of throughput since we can add up performance from the disks. Uh, so essentially, as you add disks, you get scalable performance. And as you add nodes, you know, you're adding a lot of disks and uh, that scales out the performance. Now, the data is of course distributed over uh, uh, several nodes. And the other nice aspect of this is you could use uh, a lot of commodity hard hardware and still get a lot of performance out of it because you're aggregating performance. Uh, and uh, those were the original uh, design concepts essentially. Uh, now that actually uh, leads to a lot of things. The first thing is you have a lot of hardware, so you need to be resilient to failure. So you could, uh, with lots of components and nodes and disks, uh, uh, there's a chance of something failing. Uh, and so you need a design that can recover from a failure. Um, uh, HDFS design uh, does address this. Uh, we already looked at the scalability aspect of it. Uh, this essentially is addressed by having a lot of nodes uh, and spreading out the data. Uh, there's another issue that's about name, namespace scalability and we'll uh, address this in upcoming slides and how the new generation of HDFS is essentially uh, handling this. Now, it's all nice to have uh, data spread out, but that also means that uh, your application should be local uh, using local data uh, because otherwise you're going to have the application constantly moving data from remote nodes to local nodes and that would uh, affect the scalability of the application itself. So your data might scale but uh, doesn't help if your application doesn't scale. Uh, and the map reduce approach essentially was developed with this in mind and uh, the map tasks are essentially localized to close to the data as, as much as possible. And the last aspect is portability. Uh, I mean, when you're using commodity hardware and you know all kinds of different operating systems, you want some uh, uh, generalized option framework that essentially works on all of those systems without having to change everything each time you move. So the portability aspect is one important thing. So. Given all that, uh, what was the solution? This is an overview diagram of the HDFS architecture. So uh, as, as I mentioned, the data is spread out into blocks uh, across data nodes. So you see three data nodes out here. So say you have a file uh, that's broken up over those three data nodes. Uh, these blocks in green are basically pieces of the file that are spread out. Uh, the other thing that happens is you each of these blocks is replicated and by default it's replicated three times. Uh, which can be rack aware, so you can actually recover from a rack failure and a node failure. Uh, so this replication process is part of the read and write uh, process, so you can actually see uh, uh, how this impacts uh, performance a bit later. We have more slides on this in an upcoming lesson. Uh, so that's the data spreading out part of it, but something has to keep track of it, and that's the name node and keeping track of it is essentially metadata. So this is data about the data itself. So uh, it has info about the file system state, uh, the block information, like the edits and transaction info, any locks, like if something is being written to, uh, so that you're not stepping on uh, each other. 
so all that's handled by the name node. So that's essentially the design. So just to summarize, uh, you have a single name node. This is in the original design. Uh, and multiple data nodes. So you have uh, data nodes managing the storage essentially, uh, blocks of data. And they serve the read and write requests from clients. And uh, they do block creation, deletion, replication based on what the name node uh, is uh, telling them. So uh, in the original design, there was a standby name node option and uh, the failover could be handled manually. And uh, that's preserved in the uh, current design too. So what changed in Hadoop 2? The big thing is HDFS federation. So uh, what do we mean by federation? Basically what we are doing is trying to uh, have multiple data nodes, uh, I mean multiple name nodes so that uh, you can increase the namespace scalability. So if you remember from the first design, you have essentially a single node handling all the name uh, namespace uh, responsibilities. And you can imagine as you start having thousands of nodes that will not scale. And if you have billions of files, you'll have scalability issues. So to address that, the federation aspect was brought in. Uh, that also means performance in improvements. Uh, the other nice thing is, uh, since you have multiple uh, uh, namespaces and name nodes, uh, you can isolate uh, essentially uh, particular applications. If something is very intensive and in, uh, uh, in metadata operations, it's not going to impact everything else on the system. So how is this done? So the first aspect, as I mentioned, is multiple name node servers. And the next aspect is to have multiple namespaces. And the data is now stored in block pools. Uh, so there's a pool associated with each uh, name node and namespace. And these pools are essentially uh, uh, spread out over all the data nodes. So the other uh, features I want to talk about before I go to the overview diagram is uh, high availability. So you have the option of redundant name nodes. Again, the failover is uh, manual. Uh, the other key component that changed is essentially having heterogeneous storage and archival storage. Now, there's a lot of new storage solutions. Everything's getting better in terms like SSDs and archival storage. Uh, you also have a lot more memory on the nodes now, so all this can be put into the uh, heterogeneous storage and like, uh, uh, essentially uh, handled by HDFS so that uh, you can get all the performance out of these uh, enhancements. So this is all hand, uh, supported in Hadoop 2. So I want to finish by looking at like a quick diagram of the federation. So if you remember the uh, original design, you had one namespace and uh, a, data, a bunch of data nodes. So you, it, it, the structure looks similar. You have a bunch of name nodes now instead of one name node. And each of those name nodes is essentially uh, writing to these pools, but the pools are spread out over the data nodes just like before. Essentially, the data is spread out in blocks over the uh, different data nodes. So the block pool is essentially the main thing that's different. Now, when we go forward uh, and look at HDFS in detail, we're going to still stick to the original HDFS design to explain things because that's easier, but I want to keep it. I want you to keep this in mind that uh, the scalability has been improved by this federated approach. So that concludes this uh, HDFS uh, video. And then in the next video, we're going to look at uh, other aspects uh, like scheduling that have improved in uh, the next generation. Thank you.